सरस्वती वेदा मे अश्विना आप्यायंतु ममांगानी वाक्राण चक्षुश्रोत्र मधो बलमिंद्रियाणी चर्वाणी ब्रह्मोपनिषद ब्रह्म निरा कुया ब्रह्म निराकोत अनिराकमस्त अनिराकमस्त तदात्म निरजेय भुवनेशत् धर्म हेमये सो हेमये सो ओं शांति 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 हार्टी फ्रेटर्नल ग्रीटिंग्स एंड गुड विशेष टू ऑल दी ब्रदर्स एंड अदी सिस्टर्स बिफोर आई नरेट the work of another prajapati i would uh, rather get back to get back to give some more uh, detail which is necessary in this context i have spoken to you in all these days nine prajapatis and their ladies the prajapatis constitute eventually the male hierarchy and the their nature or female aspect constitutes the female hierarchy that's how we have marisi and kala and their activity atri and anasuya their activity bhrugu and khyati their activity angira and shraddha their activity vasistha urja and arundhati and the activity pulasya with havir bhuk elabila and kaikasi their activity he has three different natures the solar plexus prajapati then pulaha and the lady gati and their activity and then the eighth prajapati kratu and the lady kriya and their activity and yesterday we spoke of adhvaryu and shanti or another name for the shanti is chitti and their activity thus there are nine prajapatis who are expressed through the creator they are expressed through the creator from higher circles just like the children are expressed through us not from us though by ignorance we think they are our children the truth is that they are expressed through us they could be our elders meaning ancestors 
and they could be connected in the past lives or not connected. But in the case of the nine Prajapatis, they are expressed through the Creator. They come from higher circles. The nine ladies, they came through Devahuti and Kardama Prajapati. This you should know. Devahuti and Kardama, which I explained in the previous classes. Kardama and Devahuti, through them, nine ladies were expressed, constituting a hierarchy. So to this hierarchy of the ladies, female hierarchy, the source is Devahuti. And the Kardama also came from most high circles. The scripture does not say that he came through Creator or any such thing. This is what I want to clarify. The nine Prajapatis which I mentioned to you, they are called Nava Brahma, Nava Brahmas. The nine Prajapatis, they are Nava Brahmas. Nava means nine. They came through the Creator. The ladies relating to these Prajapatis came through Devahuti and Kardama. They precede this. this. Those who attended to earlier classes, to them it is easy to understand. That's why I want to give some antecedents before I speak of another Prajapati and another female principle constituting the hierarchy. As I said in the very first class, through the creators, Prajapatis came as the fourth step. Through the creator, the Prajapatis came as the fourth step. The Manus came as the seventh step. If you go back to earlier teachings, you know that. Maybe in the future Indian group lives, I will not pick up a topic which would be a continuity of the past topics. Because there are always some new members and they cannot follow. They cannot follow. We have been teaching here from 2010 a successive events of cosmogenesis. It would be helpful for people who would like to know how the creation came to be. But then each year different composition of the group is present. There are some common members, but there are many who are uncommon. So when you pick up a continuity, a continuation of topic, all those members who came earlier, they don't come now. Some of them come and some new members come. So therefore it becomes difficult to narrate the cosmogenesis. Coming back to the topic from, from the Creator, in the fourth step there are Prajapati. In the seventh step we have Manus. In the seventh step. That's why with, with Manus the major aspect of Creator's work is over as seven days of creation. First, in the first step, in the first step the Creator brings out ignorance. In the very first step the Creator brings out ignorance. That's why we all have ignorance. And that ignorance is a five-fold ignorance which I was, which was explained earlier. 
In the second step, he brought out Kumaras. In the third step, he brought out Prajapatis. In the third step, he brought out Rudras. <coughs> In the fourth step, he brought out Prajapatis. It's not that he brought out, really speaking. It is they who came out through him. They express themselves in an order which was not known to the Creator. That's why Creator is not seen as a very, very accomplished one. Things come through him which he do not which he does not. <coughs> Things come through him which he does not know. So not much is known, just like many things come through us which we don't know. So in the fifth step came out the word. In the sixth step, the the Vedas came out. In the seventh step, Manus came out. That's how there is an order. Rudra sir, not meant for procreation and enabling beings to take forms. Kumaras are also not meant for it. The Kumaras, they came to form the fourfold existence and their eternal celibates, eternal youth, they do not involve into creational process. They provide the support for the creational process. Rudras also, they have no program to create, to create and offer bodies to the being. They exist as vibrations in eleven different dimensions. The vibrations of Rudra are with the matter, with the water, with the fire, with the air, with the akasha, with the sun, with the moon, with the life principle, and so on. There are about eleven Rudras. They create vibrations and a field of activity for creation. But they are not the ones who are involved in giving birth to beings. That was the problem for the Creator. He was asked to perpetuate creation to enable beings to get into the world. First ignorance came, nothing could be done with ignorance. Second, the Kumaras came, they are eternal celibates. Third came Rudras. The Rudras formed the field. Eh? So the first, second and third were not very useful to the Creator in the sense of preparing Basis for the beings, they were useful in a different dimension and they remain at all times uh, helping the creation. They came through. Just like we give birth to children, they may or may not follow the program that we have. The children that we have, that we get, are not our children. They come with their program. That's how Kumaras came with their program coming from the most high circles. 
Rudras came from the from a higher dimension. Prajapatis came and they are the ones who are to oblige to enable beings to form. So also the Manus. Prajapatis constitute the the hierarchy of wisdom. Manus constitute the hierarchy of rulership, kingship. Prajapatis are the wisdom class. Manus are the ruling class. So, among the Manus, the first Manu is Swayam Bhuva Manu. Among the Manus. The first Manu is Swayam Bhuva Manu. His work is to bring down as many beings into the creation as possible. He has a lady. Her name is called Sata Rupa. Sata Rupa. Sata Rupa means she gives, she helps Manu, Swayam Bhuva, to give birth to hundreds of children. Sata means hundred. Rupa means form. Sata Rupa and Swayam Bhuva Manu constitute the first couple of Manus. Among the seven Manus, he is the first one. Swayambhu Manu and Satarupa, they wanted to bring forth beings. But there is no place where they can do it. Because there is no platform, there is no there is no app. Therefore, app has to be created. That's where you have the story of the wild boar. Bringing forth the principle of earth which is submerged in the waters. After the upper part of the earth is formed, there is a there is a platform for them to deliver beings, just like we look for a house after we marry. After we marry, when we decide to live together, we look for a house. So to them that was the place. Through them came three ladies, three ladies and two sons. The three ladies are Devahuti, Akuti, and Prasuti. Prasuti. To whom, to whom did they come? To, through whom did they come? Swayam Bhuva and Satarupa. So when you speak of female hierarchy, apart from the concepts of the first, second and third logos, who we call Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, you keep them at the top, Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati. Beyond them is 
it is one consciousness as pure consciousness pure consciousness in the next step is the concept of first lagos the concept of second lagos and the concept of third lagos so that, that is the second state of female female hierarchy the highest being the world mother then in the next step you get satarupa satarupa with swayam ho manu kansiv దేవహూతి ఆకూతి అండ్ ప్రసూతి దీస్ త్రీ కాన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఇన్ ది క్రియేషన్ యాజ్ ఎ సెకండ్ స్టెప్ ఆఫ్టర్ శతరూప ఇన్ ది క్రియేషన్ దేవహూతి గేవ్ బర్త్ టు నైన్ లేడీస్ ఇన్ కోఆపరేషన్ విత్ కర్దమ ప్రజాపతి శ్రియాస గేవ్ బర్త్ టు కపిల యాజ్ ది టెన్త్ వన్ యాజ్ ది టెన్త్ వన్ Kapila is Lord himself reborn as the first incarnation of the planet. The nine ladies were given in marriage to nine Prajapatis. So that's where this, the stories of the nine ladies, they constitute one set. the nine ladies from kala to shanti they are all born to devahuti devahuti is born to satarupa satarupa comes through the creator along with swayam bhuman they come together is try to familiarize the hierarchy swayam bho manu and satrupa together they descend from the creator as the first couple through satrupa there are three daughters devahuti akuti prasuti through deva who the seven ladies nine ladies came through. and their marriage is with the seven nine man prajapati so these are all principles in manifestation you should understand explained as explained in stories i repeat once again there is a trinity who are an expression from pure consciousness so pure consciousness is at the top of the female hierarchy through that pure consciousness came the triple forces as will knowledge and activity then through creator that the trinity relating to third lagos and his concept came through satarupa <coughs> through satarupa again there are three ladies from coming of which devahuti through devahuti train nine female principles came through likewise from akuti 
అండ్ ప్రసూతి ఆల్సో ఫీమేల్ ప్రిన్సిపుల్స్ కమ్ త్రూ సో ది ఫీమేల్ ప్రిన్సిపుల్స్ దట్ కేమ్ త్రూ దేవహూతి ఆకూతి అండ్ ప్రసూతి కాన్స్టిట్యూట్ ది ఫీమేల్ హైరార్కి when we speak of the female hierarchy we speak of the female principles coming through devahuti aakuti and prasuti and for devahuti aakuti and prasuti the higher principle is satarupa for satarupa the higher principle is the mother who constitutes the concept of the third logos saraswati and for the three mothers of the three logos the most high is the pure consciousness i am going up and down so that you get familiar with it i repeat from i repeat again from above downwards pure consciousness which is an emergence from existence it has names like aditi gayatri savitri etc sri so many names lalita this pure consciousness which she found the first the top most point of female hierarchy in the next step you have the the ladies of the trinity representing the power of will the power of knowledge and the power of activity that is the second step of the hierarchy in the third step we have satar satar rupa in the fourth step we have devahuti aakuti prasuti how many steps have happened 1 2 3 4 now comes from devahuti some more female principles there are nine in number which i have explained through akuti also something comes through prasuti also there are females that happen female principles that happen in this scripture the first set is presented first the second set relating to akuti comes now and later comes prasu but they are all on the horizontal bar they are, they all from the they belong to the same state so what happens is when the three ladies are married to three prajapatis devahuti is said to have been married to kardama he comes from the absolute via the first lagos and third lagos to be absolute energy finding its expression through first logos and through the third logos has kardama prajapat
లైక్ వైజ్ ది సెకండ్ లేడీ ఆకూతి షీ హ్యాస్ హర్ మేల్ కౌంటర్ పార్ట్ ది నేమ్ ఇస్ రుచి 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 మీన్స్ ది టేస్ట్ ఆఫ్ లైఫ్ టేస్ట్ ఆఫ్ లైఫ్ this prajapati also comes from the most high through the second logos and the third logos so the second logos and the third logos para brahman vaya the second logos and third logos ruchi prajapati happens the first one happens పరబ్రహ్మన్ ఫస్ట్ లాగోస్ అండ్ థర్డ్ లాగోస్ కర్దమా ఈజ్ వయా ది ఫస్ట్ లాగోస్ ఫ్రమ్ పరబ్రహ్మన్ రుచి ఈజ్ ఫ్రమ్ పరబ్రహ్మన్ వయా ది సెకండ్ లాగోస్ త్రూ ది థర్డ్ లాగోస్ ఈజ్ ది వన్ హూ గివ్స్ టేస్ట్ ఆఫ్ లివింగ్ the joy of living because second logos represents the 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 beauty and the bliss of existence in creation then the third lady prasuti she is married to a prajapati whose name is very familiar to you is called prajapati daksha he came through he came from parabrahman vaya third logos vaya third logos this analysis is important which i am giving you it's not there in the scripture the subsequent acts prove what what they are <coughs> so the three ladies devahuti aakuti and prasuti they had three male counterparts they are all expressions of para brahman why are the first second and third logos kardama gave birth with devahuti nine ladies ruchi along with aakuti he gave birth to the very essence of experiencing which i will narrate now through ruchi and aakuti give birth to the principle called yajna and dakshina yajna and dakshina then the third lady prasuti she is given in marriage to daksha daksha gave birth to 16 female principles you have to get familiar with them to make a, a schematic understanding understanding of the whole thing so it is obvious that in this group life we cannot cover the 16 females of daksha um, come that came through daksha and prasuti it will be for the future classes prajapati daksha he is the able one able one means he believes that he is the able one only men of knowledge realize that there is only one able man and we are all his instruments daksha suffers from the same characteristics of third lagos third lagos also from time to time feels he is the creator 
and he is made to know from time to time that he is not, he is just a channel. So Darsha Prajapati carries this characteristic. Normally, such things should be explained on a board, no? But I believe in your, in the brilliance of your intelligence, that's why. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll give a chart, <clears throat> which you can, you have the ability to multiply it. So now you see how big is female hierarchy. From down below you have nine female principles coming through Devahuti, one female principle coming through Akuti, sixteen female principles coming through Prasuti. 16 plus 1, 17 plus 9, 26, they came through the three, along with the three ladies, three ladies, they are 29. And with Satarupa, they are 30. And with the Trinity, they are 33. There is a hierarchy of 33 female principles. Emerging from one world mother, who is the cosmic nature. So when you speak, when you always ask for female hierarchy, female hierarchy, it's quite a huge hierarchy, even at the cosmic plane. Thirty-three female principles, of which in this group life we have explained nine of them, from Kala to Shanti. Now we get to Akuti and make an understanding. What is it that came through, through Akuti and Ruchi Prajapati, Ruchi? Now you see, we mentioned nine Prajapatis already in relation to the nine ladies from Kala to Shanti. Isn't it? Nine Prajapati. I also mentioned about Kardama Prajapati. And now Ruchi Prajapati, eleven. And then Darsha Prajapati, twelve. So that's how there is. The Prajapati is exceed number ten for certain mysterious reasons which I explain later. So therefore, the scheme you need to have in your mind, absolute existence, from there to emergence of pure consciousness, pure consciousness detailing into three lagos and as their concerts, and then the third lagos giving birth to Satarupa, Satarupa again giving birth to three female principles and these three female principles giving birth to nine plus one plus sixteen, twenty-six female principles. That constitutes the female hierarchy, the basic female hierarchy. So after that I give you what is it that this Ruchi Prajapati along with Akuti brought out into the creation as the creational principles? It is with that the fourth canto of Bhagavata starts. I should hold a, 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 a quiz program.
so that you i know how much have you understood what is the name of the what are the names of the three daughters of satrupa devahuti akuti prasut devahuti means the one who brings who calls forth the devas who calls forth the devas akuti means the one who calls for the time cycles prasuti calls for the beings so we first come here come here with the principle of ruchi and akuti they give birth to yajna and dakshina they give birth to yajna and dakshina yajna is sacrifice dakshina is the fruits of action which are distributed yajna and dakshina we do life is life is said to be care life life is intended to be carried out as an agnya as an offering that is the fundamental law of creation that we are here for others not for our good this very basic understanding is missing in the human beings the cosmic devas the solar devas the planetary devas the animals the plants and the mineral they are all for others not for themselves the beings deserve their existence when they live for others the beings deserve to be in creation when they are for others when they live for themselves they, they create ripples in creation that's why in the very beginning of the creation yajna came to be the principle of yajna sacrifice sacrifice means li- not living for oneself or living for others a selfless living but not a selfish living <coughs> selfish living constricts the consciousness the the consciousness is contracted through selfish living selfless living causes expansion to consciousness that's why in the very initial stages of creation the second logos who is said to be in charge of the beings in creation he himself came down as yajna and his lady lakshmi came as dakshina dakshina yajna means sacrifice living for others when you live for others there are fruits that come to us through your selfless actions selfless action brings greater fruits than selfish action selfish action and those who are selfless accomplish more and they the around them is the much name much fame much divine splendor and much wealth 
ఆదర్ దే కమ్ అప్ దే అగైన్ ఆఫర్ యాజ్ డొనేషన్ ఆర్ దాన దిస్ యాక్టివిటీ ఆఫ్ సాక్రిఫైస్ విచ్ బ్రింగ్స్ ఫార్ బ్రింగ్స్ ఫార్ ది ఫ్రూట్స్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో డిస్ట్రిబ్యూటెడ్ సెల్ఫ్లెస్ యాక్టివిటీ ఎనేబుల్స్ expanded consciousness when you have an expanded consciousness your activity brings forth much better fruits of action those fruits are again distributed out of compassion to fellow beings on one side there is an act of offering when you live a life of offering things gather around you because my nature is nature tends to be favorable to those who offer themselves to the welfare of others therefore such actions bring greater fruits and those fruits are again distributed the show this two have constituted the principle of sacrifice and the principle of sharing and distribution this is all the basic knowledge and love that comes from through the second lagos knowledge and love enables living for others and sharing with others living for others and sharing with others without this you cannot taste the joy of life you cannot experience the bliss of existence in creation the joy is by self offering and for being compassionate enough to distribute the fruits of action this is the original fundamental the rule of the game the fundamental rule of the game is given a go by so consequently we have tremendous conflict even today in creation the ones who consecrate to the principle of yajna and dakshina they find their gradual liberation from the creation the liberation comes from this creation only when we live a life of offering and a life of sharing and distribution of the natural resources that are gathered around us the thought should be what is it that i can offer the thought should never be what should i get never what should i get is a counter principle to what should i offer so when we think of getting and gaining here you are into the loop hole of awareness when you are for sharing with others and offering life for others benefit you are playing the game rule very well individually each person finds his liberation as much as he consecrates to this principle and the men who liberated themselves the men who liberated themselves from the imprisonment imprisonment of the world 
they are those who have learnt the secret of offering themselves. And they get to the ajna of all offering, all offering, whatever they have, they offer. They even offer their body. They even offer their body if it helps others. There are beings who have made their self-offering. So there are gradations of offering as Ajna. The Lord Himself has offered and He has offered Himself. Today we have many tests for focusing. The, particularly today the flight moves at a lower height. I'll tell you a small anecdote. There was a child who was admitted to a very sophisticated school. He was admitted. It's my personal experience I am sharing with you. He was admitted to a very sophisticated school which exists in the valley outside Vishakhapatnam. There is a school in a valley called Valley School. It's a very peaceful place, very spacious rooms. It is all silent. A child was admitted in that school and he studied there for about six years. But he has not gained much, not gained much knowledge. So he was shifted from that school to an ordinary school. In that school, there is only one hall like this. There are no walls. It is divided into six, six, six parts by the carpet. In six places, six carpets are laid. Six classes are conducted in the hall. Here one class, to my left side another class, over there another class, over there another class. Like that six classes were concurrently conducted to six, six standards. Six teachers were speaking to their children. Every teacher speaks to her children in the class. Another teacher speaks to her her children in the, in the same hall, six teachers concurrently speak. The children are to orient only to their teacher and listen. Such is the method. Such is the method. So when a child was shifted from that school where it's all very silent, <coughs> All nature and each room is spacious, separate rooms for each class. He did not learn much because, so therefore he was shifted to an ordinary school where six classes are conducted within one hall. He studied there for three years. In those three years, he gained the best of focusing. 
It is in those three years. He gained the best of focusing. If you are to learn, you have to listen only to your teacher, not to other teachers. There are six teachers speaking in a hall and you only have to listen to only your teacher and nothing else. And he gave such a focus. It was amazing for the parents at home. When the boy studies his books, he is unmindful of what is happening around him. He does not know what is happening over there. Even if someone puts on television, he doesn't, he doesn't get into his... Or if some other is playing over there, he doesn't get into his ears. He is only with what he is supposed to listen to and look to. How could it happen? It's a matter of focus which he learned here, which he did not learn in the other school. Thereafter, his ability to grasp has been very good. And he became eventually a professional. Even now, when he is with one thing, he is completely with it. Even if his cell phone rings here, he is with it, it doesn't. Is it a facility or not? That's why it is necessary that we focus upon what we intend to. We cannot be generally focused in all the 360 dimensions. Then we cannot listen anything, we cannot register anything. Just for information, the parent is me and the child is Guru Prasad. That's how he learned, eh? focusing. Even if there are ten things around him, what he is with it, he is with it. And that school where six classes were in one hall is none, none other than the Walti Chatter School, Balabhanu Vidyalaya. So it's a matter of your deep inclination to listen that enables you to listen. When we are deeply interested in what is being taught, other things do not enter into our ears. That is what is called true focus. Unless one is focused, one cannot see well, one cannot listen well. One cannot see well, one cannot listen well. One cannot sleep well. If you have enough, a focused person doesn't demand situations. He does what is to be done in a situation. So therefore, this, only such persons can take the best of the experience of life because you are focused. The essence of life is for those who are focused. It's not for those who are diffused. The diffused ones cannot gain much experience. The focused one gains experience. That's why I always tell you, whatever is the flower, the honey bee is interested in the honey of the flower. It is not interested about anything else around it. So let that be. Then only the taste of life can be best experienced. The taste of life can be best experienced. So therefore coming back to the topic, they, 
the sacrifice, you know, how it exists, the principle of yajna, it exists in creation as the annual year. The annual year. We call the year as personification of yajna. Every year has its sacrifice. Every year it conducts through nature. That's why we have a name for every year. From Aries via Taurus again to Aries. The years are named. They are called they are called Samvatsara Purushas. Samvatsara Purusha means it is the annual yearly God who descends and offer himself for the benefit of the being. The beings are benefited by the cyclical functioning of the year. There is the spring followed by summer and it is followed by rainy season. The rainy season brings forth the fauna and flora of the earth and there is the bloom season where there is offering of the fruits and flowers of nature to the beings and also food. And then in its return it takes to winter and the fall season. That's how there is an annual functioning of energies by which waters move up to the sky, from the oceans come down as rain that enables creation of food on the planet for the planetary beings. And the beings are all allowed to survive on the basis of this food. If there are no seasons, there is no food on planet. When there is no food on planet, the beings cannot survive. We least realize that, that we live on account of the seasons that are conducted in an annual year. There should be enough spring, enough summer, enough rainy season, which brings forth the bloom season, followed by the winter and also the fall. This is how annually the year God enables the nourishment of the beings. The nourishment of the beings is on the basis of the cyclical movement. So therefore, the, the Lord Himself is said to be demonstrating the act of sacrifice for the sake of the beings. If rays do not happen, in the higher circles there is no problem. Only on earth there is a problem. Like, but they are concerned about the ones in the lower circles. And therefore there is the seasonal upward and downward movement on an annual basis. It is only by that there is enough wealth on earth. 
even if we have lot of sea waters they are not they do not nourish the beings they do not nourish the beings so these salty waters are vaporized through summer and brought down as rains as a pure water which help growth of cereals pulses fruits vegetables and so on transforming useless energy into useful energy and offering such energy for the general benefit of all is what is called originally yajna or sacrifice and those who do this yajna as the yearly god does are able to follow him yes. you all know in the west that there is a ritual of a festival of paswa passover one cannot pass over into higher circles along with the sun god along with the yearly god one cannot pass over along with the year god unless he also follows the year god in spirit the ones who live for others who offer their and all their energies for others and distribute whatever comes to them they cannot go through the festival of passover passover is a very important festival to to pass over this earthly cycle there is a methodology we need to follow the year god the year god demonstrates how he works for so many beings on the planet and he does not eat for himself anything he raises the waters salty waters to skies in in summer brings them down as pure waters enables food to happen on the planet by which the beings are all put to nourishment and the around the winter there is the harvest and thereafter there is the fall and then the year the god in the month of aries he hands over he hands over his function to another year god who descends who we call samvatsara purusha samvatsara purusha means the the god of the year or the year god he comes down he helps beings and then he hands it over to the incoming incoming samasara purusha so just like in our professions also when someone comes into your place and you are transferred to some other place you hand over your duties to him and then you move on this principle of handing over to the incoming one and thereby leaving to higher circle is what exactly the significance of passover passover is a festival in the sense that we move into higher circles so this principle is established in creation 
even in the very early stages of creation. How many educated intellectuals know about this principle? Does education give this dimension of nature? Does it give this dimension of creation? Education does not teach the very fundamentals of living on the planet. That's where one has to resort to the original scriptures. That having come to earth, you fulfill your service to the surrounding beings. And when you are fulfilling duties to surrounding beings, the nature cooperates with you. When the nature cooperates, don't appropriate it to yourself. Distribute and share. You see the farmer, he sows seeds of wheat and rice. All that grows, it's not for him. He has to share it with others. The better you share, the better you are nourished by nature by different means. So, Transforming one's own life as a life of offering is one dimension. Utilizing the resources that reach one to ensure their distribution is another dimension. The first one is called yajna. The second one is called dana or dakshina. That's why after carrying out any big activity of welfare, there is always a distribution of wealth. It is followed by distribution of wealth to the surrounding beings. That's how this principle came through from the second Lagos, via third Lagos, as a, firstly as Ruchi Prajapati and in association with Akuti, in association with Akuti, this Yajna and Dakshina came to be. Sacrifice is seen as a male principle and the, when, it is, when the wealth is through sacrifice, when you receive the wealth, the distribution of that wealth is seen as Dakshina or the female principle. The male, the male works. And the female gathers. Does the female distribute or not? This is the question. The female is the nature in you. The male should function in welfare of others. As a consequence, when you receive the resource of resources of nature, the female in you should let it to be distributed. It cannot be accumulated. If you accumulate, it binds you. If you distribute, it releases you. That's why when you work for yourself, it binds you. When you save only for yourself, it binds you. When you work for others, you are released. When you distribute for those who don't have enough, you are further released. 
సో దట్ ఈస్ హౌ ది ప్రిన్సిపుల్ ఆఫ్ ఆకూతి రుచి అండ్ ఆకూతి గేవ్ బర్త్ టు ది ఇయర్ గాడ్ అండ్ ది ది ప్రిన్సిపుల్ ఆఫ్ షేరింగ్ అండ్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ ది వెరీ ఫౌండేషన్ ఆఫ్ భగవద్గీత ఈజ్ ఆన్ దిస్ యజ్ఞ భగవద్గీత ఈజ్ ఎ స్క్రిప్చర్ that very strongly recommends to adopt your life to yajna if you are not adopting your life to yajna you tend to be more and more and more a prisoner of your life so therefore the ear god and the wealth that he brings out through his offering and distribution of that wealth is said to be another dimension of creation self offering is the male principle distribution is seen as the female principle if a lady of the house does not have any distribution that house is destined to be doomed destined to be doomed the house is your body the lady is your nature likewise in another dimension in a couple when one generates wealth the other only secures the wealth but doesn't let it to be distributed she is only working for self do self do the so the scriptural laws are the creational laws are <coughs> when you plant a mango seed it gives birth to so many mangoes eventually if you don't distribute those mangoes and keep it at home they get rotten in nature one seed gives birth to so many thousands of mangoes every season the tree gives a thousand mangoes and again a thousand mangoes again a, just from one seed one act of offering one act of offering gives birth to so much wealth and that needs to be distributed you see how a rice grain when it sprouts it gives birth to a bunch of rice grains which are more than 100 or 200 one rice grain multiplication is in the nature so that's why bhagavad gita says release yourself by distribution if you do the contrary you would only be imprisoning yourself self offering and sharing these are the two principles that came through ruchi prajapati and aputi and they in turn gave birth to the 12 sun signs the ear god comes with his 12 qualities of the sun signs that's why it is said that the see aries it has a quality taurus it has a quality gemini it has a quality 12 different qualities are transmitted by the ear god 
to enable one cycle of offering. That's why it is said eh, that they gave birth to twelve children who constitute the twelve qualities of the twelve sun signs. And it is true that there is the formation of the related energies throughout the year. The, the giving birth to means when, when there is one cyclical movement, it is observed in twelve different dimensions. The twelve di- different dimensions of the twelve signs have different characteristics and nature. So that is what they gave birth to. So that's how there is the story of Akuti, Ruchi Prajapati, giving birth to sacrifice and sharing. This is one dimension which you kindly know. Then we will, in the next proximate class, speak of, speak of Daksha Prajapati and the sixteen females that came through. It's again a very profound subject. So I think you would uh, no more you would no more have enthusiasm about female hierarchy because it is <laughs> it is so elaborate. The networking of creation is basically the work of the mother. So you have many details over there. With the help of Agastya, kindly try to assimilate what is said. Then we will see.